and welcome to another evening of frank conversation here on hard copy coming to you from our studios in abuja i'm maupe ogun yusuf revolutionary and praiseworthy this is some of the words the president used to describe the electoral act amendment bill before he eventually put pen to paper signing the landmark legal framework into law but not without reservation but the president, despite the democratic efficacy inherent in many commendable sections of the now signed act, section 84, subsection 12, which says no political appointee at any level shall be voting, delegate, or be voted for at the convention or Congress of any political party for the purpose of the nomination of candidates for any election, runs in contravention of the constitution. Interestingly, the Constitution Amendment Bill was laid before both houses of the National Assembly on Wednesday this week, kick-starting another round of a process which could see the country spend over a billion naira this year alone. There are now questions about how routine the amendment process has become and whether it's indeed capable of bringing in the much-needed shift Nigeria needs to get its many parts effectively working again. On Hard Copy tonight, I speak with Honorable Sergius Ogun, who is a member representing Esan Northeast, Esan Southeast constituency in the House, and is also a member of the Constitutional Review Committee. Honorable Sergius Ogun, welcome to Hard Copy. Thank you for having me. Uh, first, should we say our condolences to you on uh, the killings that happened in Uromi, I mean, your mm. constituency in Edo State? Uh, the Anwar killings were quite uh, gruesome. And our condolences mm. to you on that. Thank you very much. Well, I will use this opportunity to condole with my constituents, really in Uromi. Uh, so this afternoon, we had, uh, I heard that um, we lost about 28 people and still counting. So I pray that um, God will console them and um, strengthen them. And by the grace of God, we will get out of this. It will never happen again by the grace of God. Well, we sincerely hope so. But today was a significant day indeed for many Nigerians, and I'm sure even members of the National Assembly. You had doubted before now that the president was going to put pen to paper and sign the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, but now he has. Do you think that this indeed marks um, a new dispensation in our electoral process? Yes. I, funny enough, I have been with the president on this when we started interfering with certain sections of the bill. I, I didn't think we were doing the right thing, but I supported the president when he said that nominations really should be the business of the political parties and not by law, you know? So I supported him then. And somehow yet last week, I granted interview to uh, Vanguard online, and I said he was going to sign this week. So when I saw the breaking news, I was in the retreat this morning, and I wrote them, I wrote my name, and I said, uh, advisor, presidential advisor on electoral act. But somehow, I think, I, I, I mean, we are celebrating the president right now, and that's what we want to see from a president. Take your time to go through the bill, sign that bill into act for the good of the nation. That's what we want. We didn't need this drama. In any case, we didn't need the drama at all. And we believe- But the drama was from who? Oh, you blame your well, colleagues for that? Well, yes, when we interfered, yeah, because we are, reading, we are reading things into past elections. Now, talking about the nomination, getting involved in nominations is because people are scared that governors will do certain things. Even in Section 84, we are talking about, again, is with the fear of what the governors will do. Mm. You know? But that's not to say they cannot go around and do it in a different way. But this is my take. Well, the president has highlighted that section 8412 in particular, and he thinks it runs ultra-virus the Constitution. Um, first, do you support him in that one as well? I don't. Sign, he has signed the bill, the into act. I congratulate him on that. We can go to court and sort that out. We cannot, okay, now we celebrated the PIA. PIA has, PIA has you think that this should be resolved in the court? Because uh, some people will say that he signed this in good faith, realizing the urgency of the situation and perhaps as a result of the criticism and the pressure which is now mounted on him. Nonetheless, he put pen to paper and signed it we are in the hope yeah. that the National Assembly mm. will take a second look at those clauses. Uh, but you don't mm. think that that should be the way to go? No, no. We can't be sending bills. Most times when we are working these bills, 
we work with the executive. INEC was involved with this bill from day one. And I can actually tell you more than 90% of what's in the bill came from INEC. We work with the executive. But on these ones, you have accused your colleagues of meddling. Yes. You know how that happened. I'm sure you, your people were there the day we did the clause by clause consideration on the Electoral Act. The attention was really on the electronic transmission. We had issues there. And as you will remember, I hate to call his name, my dear speaker, my best friend in the world, amended that particular clause. And like I've always said, it was an APC problem. The problem they had with their former chairman with direct or indirect. But this is, a, this is something that is within the poor view of the political party to do. Nomination of individuals, of aspirants, or rather individuals. You know? But to bring it, I want to, by law, decide for the political parties I felt from day one was wrong. You know, and we played into the hands of the president. Some people will say we're past that now. Yeah. I mean, direct or indirect primaries, we're past that now. Yeah. We're now with section 84, section, uh, subsection 12, yes. and it's, it's dealing with something entirely different. Uh, on this mm -hmm. particular one, you are not going with, your, with the president on this one. You seem to, even though you think your colleagues are yeah. meddling, mm -hmm. you think that the courts should resolve that particular section yeah i say that because with the pia the president signed the pia again was more of an executive bill and we had the the, the entire nnpc you know big boys walking the corridors of the national assembly we signed it took it to him and then he sent it back signed it brought it back with amendments and that's what's happening here again so we cannot be making bills as national assembly which is our work we sent it to the president and it's dictating to us on the shape and form of the bill you had time to go through. You have advisors. Like this electoral act. When we sent it before, he was there. I mean, you were the ones that interviewed him. He wrote a letter saying, I want direct and indirect. There was a letter during the interview with, you had with him that he mounted the, the consensus, of consensus. And then he insisted. Ordinarily, if we are doing our work the way it should be, we said, okay, do another letter. But we bent over and signed. Sorry, and approved it. You know, and passed it rather. And now every time we send a bill to the president, he shouldn't be sending it back to us. We are not his house boys. You know? If you sign, if you want to sign, sign. If you don't want to sign, then keep it. I mean, I think we have over-tolerated him, but for, I'm for celebrating some, him some, today for, anyway. For something as significant as electoral, well, let's move to the Constitution Amendment now. Uh, well, there have been different zonal hearings. It's now being captured in the report that has been laid uh, before the uh, National Assembly, but not before we heard from the different zones and even sometimes the states. And it will look like everything, different mm -hmm. places want different things. Um, have you been able mm -hmm. to capture all of that in a report which you submitted, uh, which has been laid before the National Assembly? Yeah, I, I want to commend my, my, the leadership of the National Assembly for once. They got the speakers of the State Houses of Assembly to come to Abuja. We're in a retreat together. So they went through with us. You know? So and the, the wisdom behind that is they have a copy of what we lead. So they will go ahead with that copy and discuss with their colleagues in the house. So by the time we vote on it next week and transmit to them, so they already know what is coming. And praying that the governors will allow them to make the right decisions. You say they already know what is coming. They already yes. know in what way uh, the pendulum would swing because you're yes. supposed to vote on it. They wouldn't know precisely how you will vote. Yes, to a large extent, they have copies of what we laid. They agreed with us on most of those items. So they are taking, they have copies of that right now. Yeah, we might vote, we might not vote exactly the way, I mean, we might not vote in line with what we have laid, but they have a clue what we are going to send to them. I don't think we will, we will deviate too far. I imagine that, you, that this has happened mm. because you also perceive that time is running out. Yes. Uh, for a number of people, isn't, it's not just time that is running out. Faith um, is also running out. We have mm. been several constitutional amendment processes, a lot of money spent, a mm. lot of energy, plenty of enthusiasm, but that enthusiasm seems to be waning now. How do you get the people interested in this and own the constitution amendment process? I think if we vote as Nigerians and not begin to look at um, sectional interests, we might get Nigerians to appreciate what we have done. 
and they maybe put pressure on the governors to allow it to go through the states and then to come back intact. How feasible is that? Mm. This is an election mm. year. We know that oftentimes what mm. happens is that there is plenty of, well, I say division on issues sometimes. Yeah, sometimes mm. the, the divisions can get pretty crude. Mm. And we've seen that one of the reasons why the Constitution, significant amendments in the Constitution have not mm. been able to go through is because whenever it gets to the floor of the mm. National Assembly, primordial sentiments usually sure. set in. So mm. now that we are now in an election year, how optimistic are you that the National Assembly mm. will be able to push some of the significant reforms through? You've heard people like the, uh, the Emir of Kano mm. saying that time is running out and it seems that we're living on borrowed time. So this, this review is extremely necessary. It is, and I agree with you 100%. I actually, now when we're celebrating, while we are celebrating the president, we have said, oh, uh, the Electoral Act is revolutionary and all that. We needed, I needed to see that revolution in the amendment, the electoral, sorry, not the constitutional review committee work. It didn't happen. So I agree completely with the former MA. We did a lot of work on the evolution of power, but we didn't go far enough. And I've heard the likes of uh, Akin Womi, the former commissioner, sorry, the former minister of uh, agriculture, president of ADB now, saying all that. We need to give power to the states. We didn't go that far. We gave things like uh, railway, airports, correctional centers. Uh, what again? Bits and bits. Why don't we just give power to the states and get them to pay tax to the center? So which means we are still waiting again for maybe another four years to begin to look into all that. We don't have that time. I see that urgency. And the thing about us in this country, when we survive one major crisis, we put it behind us and we forget. There must be learnings to carry from whatever crisis to the future. When the answers came, I had friends who were businessmen that panicked. We had governors making concessions to the youth. Suddenly, we have forgotten about all that. All is not well with this country. So this is not a time to look at a document like this constitution, just think out with some few things and say, okay, we have, we have tried. Let's go ahead. No. So if I understand you, even as it currently stands, you are dissatisfied with even the report that has been laid before the oh, National yes. Assembly. Oh, yes. Yes, to some people we have moved. But we have not moved far enough. And like the has said, we don't have that time. We don't have that luxury of choosing, you know, bits and bits. This is the time to make these hard decisions. Are you the only one? I mean, I, I believe that there are also those who share the same thoughts as you do in the National Assembly. Is it that you're not able mm. to summon the numbers uh, to be able to, yeah. uh, I would I say, muster the enthusiasm, the courage needed uh, to make the changes? Yeah, that's true. And most people are looking through the lenses of the political party or the region. And I'm sorry to say, that's not going to lead us anywhere. But I still see most of our colleagues doing that. But if you look at, we talked about the APC, their, what's it called now, the, the restructuring document. They campaigned with was their manifesto. Then they did a review in 2018 and made recommendation for true federalism. You would have thought they have the president in the villa and the vice president. They have majority in the Senate and in the House of Rep. Why did we not introduce that in the constitutional review? They had majority. The, the deputy um, senior president is APC. The deputy speaker of the house is APC. And these were the leaders. They led us through this process. Why did we not push for this? Hmm. Well, Honorable, you recently proposed a bill which has now gone through second reading seeking to punish uh, public officials who seek, seek health care abroad. There are questions as to whether your bill was targeting the president. No, not at all. The, Did you get that? Yes, yes, but it's not him. But he's leaving. The president is leaving next year. What was the inspiration for that amendment? Ha, well, I had this bill in the last house. It went through second reading. Then the committee was discharged of their responsibility since there was no public hearing. And it was programmed for close by close consideration, but it never happened because certain people didn't want it to go through. So I introduced it. That is even coming now. We should be suspicious of why delay? Why did he delay 
T now because you will not pro just program it, you know. So now, hopefully, by the grace of God, we will do public hearing next month, and I pray that we can do close by close consultation by April or May. Mm. But even at that, is still it because still we have to go to the, the story around it was quite interesting. I mean, on the floor of the house, when your colleagues heard uh, just how much you were proposing as mm. a fine, 500 million naira was the punishment you're proposing. Mm -hmm. You said 500 million naira or and seven years yeah. um, in imprisonment. Rather draconian, you don't think? I don't think. See, that's what I was talking about, revolution. When I talk about revolution, I'm not talking about military rule. I'm not talking about people you know, doing anything that is uh, unconstitutional. We have, we have really missed it in this country. And to get back to where we should be, we need to make those hard decisions. The former EFCC chairman, said in the national newspaper punch i think something like june 2009 that a governor under the guise of going for medical treatment abroad moved out millions of dollars in one of the poorest states in this country bought four houses in the uk with 10 million dollars bought a house in cape town with 1.2 million dollars and then was caught with 1 million pounds under the guise of going for medical treatment abroad. So that's pretense. But let me, for the benefit of our viewers, let me quickly uh, read the section, which the offending section, I think is section 46 Six. of the Act. Yeah. And it says, without prejudice to the right of any Nigerian to seek medical checkup, investigation, or treatment anywhere within and outside Nigeria, no public officer of the government of the Federation or any parts thereof shall be sponsored for medical checkup, investigation or treatment abroad at public expense except in exceptional cases on the recommendation and referral by the medical board and which recommendation and referral shall be duly approved by the Minister or Commission of Health of the state as the case may be. Uh, so this is, a, but for you, the, the quarrel you had with it, with it was that if this is contravened, there was no punishment. No sanctions. Yeah. No, no, no sanctions. Yeah. Yes. First, you have said that mm. this was not inspired by the president, but would the president fall under the category of public officials which you're talking about? Oh, yes. He is. He is. The president must seek approval before going abroad oh, for yes. medical treatment. Oh, yes. So this is the act. This is the law today. Mm. So Nigerians should be asking all the trips he made. Did he go through all this process? We should be asking. But you haven't asked that. Yeah, no, no, you know, we're fine. That's why, that's why I brought this bill, because there are no sanctions. So he could flout it and get away with it. So that's why we are putting sanctions now. So when this is amended now, and this, this becomes into, the amendment is now uh, incorporated here. If you do that, then you know, the but sanctions the, will come in. The punishment which you propose yeah. is, I mean, you have said that mm. it's not draconian. You've, you've given the example of a governor who mm. you know, carried out corrupt act under the pretense mm -hmm. of going for medical treatment. Now, if you had found out that, Perhaps all of the money, well, maybe I don't know how much money he took out of the country, but if all of mm. that money was actually spent on medicals mm. and nothing more, uh, would you have frowned at it? Yes. Again, that is criminal. We have less than 1% of us in Nigeria that can travel out for medical checkup or treatment. What happens with the 99%? We are talking about a governor. You were elected. To, to take care of the people, to look after the people. Why can't you fix a hospital in your state? Why can't you use it, any hospital in Nigeria? Why spend all that money on you, on yourself alone, when there are people in your state that cannot take three square meals? That's my challenge. So it's not so much of whether it's the governor or the president. There are so many people, you go to so many of our health centers, from the primary to the secondary to the tertiary, People just die because they don't have the right equipment, they don't have the right doctors working there, the doctors are not paid or motivated, they are not properly compensated. Then you take all the money out as a president or as a governor to go treat yourself. The civil servants write the budget. We, public servants, will approve the budget, pass the budget. The president, head of the executive, we are sent to it. Then we take the money meant to execute the budget out to go treat ourselves. They how the hospitals ever going to work. So we should all swim together and survive, or we we'll drown together. No, that's not what they, but that's not the proposition here. The proposition is that you can, it's not like if you can't go, you can go. But go with approval. Thank you. Go with approval. That's fine. 
go with approval. But if you're in private sector, we don't have any business with any approval. It's your money. You go and spend it. So the point I'm making is, why does, see, I'm just trying to explain what people say is draconian. How can you spend that much money? Sorry. We need to find you. When you think twice, if you go without approval, in the first case, you have people on level 10, level 12, going overseas for, for treatment. Again, even if it's not approved, it's corruption. There was murmuring in the house when this was brought up. You see, that's always the problem. And even the person who seconded your motion pulled out. Who is my very good friend? tried to pull out. He was, gonna, he was gonna go out and I begged him, be my very good friend to stay and then second it. I don't know what happened to him. But this is the thing, most of our colleagues don't read. You bring out a brief. When your bill is coming, you are required to bring a brief. They don't sit down to take that brief and read it. He didn't read it. Mm. Guess what? The person, this bill belongs to somebody. I won't call his name today. Somebody, one of the leaders, there are 10 of them in the house. One of the leaders brought this bill in the seventh assembly. He said he even wanted to challenge it before he realized it was his bill in the seventh assembly. You saw the deputy speaker saying that the house passed a bill like this. They just don't read it. Mm. So now it's past second reading. Is yes. it going to go to public hearing? Yes. We're working on that. How do you think it will fare? Oh, it will fly like, like, I don't have issues with the public hearing at all. I mean, I want to see the Nigerians that will come and say they are against a bill like this. Because they don't know the anger on the street. I see it, I feel it. Look at just what happened, what just happened in my constituency. You know, people are, people are dying. People are hungry. People cannot get the right treatment in this country. Mm. Well, talking about the inconveniences that people are facing, right now the few queues have refused to go away. You walked a long time in upstream before you entered the, the National Assembly yeah. and you're currently in the House Committee on downstream. Yeah. I think the House has set up an investigative panel on that as we speak. Mm. Um, has there been any progress in getting to the root of why the few queues have refused to disappear? Well, the, the GMD told us it brought in a lot of fuel that people is panic. What is going on is just panic buying. But part of the, what we have unraveled so far, is the investigation is ongoing. It's just that we need to do things the right way in this country. We are, not, we are part of the global system, global world. I think we are pretty as if we are in a world of our own. The fuel we are talking about had certain element of, um, what is it now? Methanol. Methanol. And that was not in the spec of NNPC. But that was at least two weeks ago now. Yeah. This, this queues, I mean, it looked like mm. they were going. They have refused mm. to go. In fact, it looks like they're beginning to get worse in places like Abuja and Lagos. Do you have any update on that? No, what the GMD told us, what we can believe, that they brought in, they quarantined what, the, what they call toxic fuel, and then they have brought in a lot of fuel. They have more than enough to serve us. So... Maybe middlemen are doing all manner of things, I don't know. But that's what they told us. But just to finish this statement, to say that if we are done with it, what we needed to do, we don't have these issues. I just give this to you, it's not breaking news. Total pushed that fuel into the market and nothing happened. Because they are largely managed by foreigners still. They are tank, the tank will sweat, tank farm, where you store. It will sweat, so there will always be water. They make sure it's clean. They are tank, when they, the tankers that will take from the tank farm will be clean, no water. The filling stations, every day they clean, no water. So he went to that station and it's clean. They not affect anybody. So because we don't follow regulation, the regulators don't do their work. That's part of why we're in this mess. Well, it's a lot of mess to clear it will see, man. I think that's why you're in the House of Representatives to at least help clear some of it. We have to thank you for your time on hard copy. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Well, that's our program tonight, but you can send us your thoughts on any of the issues raised to the handles showing on your screen. Thank you for watching. I'm Mao Kwe Yusuf. Good night.